startup Mutable reckons it can grow cultivated pork in a bioreactor in just eight days. I'm here with CEO and co-founder Chaim Danud at the Thin Bio Better conference in Oakland, California to find out more. One thing to start with, I think that that's important, is that we strive to be cost competitive with traditional meat. Yeah. I think if, if you cannot do that in the long term, we, we don't have a business and, yeah. and we don't have a purpose. It's all about capital efficiency. I think if you uh, think about our industry, it's now maturing and it's maturing in a time where capital is not free anymore. Uh, and the significance of the news that we brought out is basically that what we have now shown at a small scale, that if we're able to successfully scale that up on a large scale, we can, from a capital perspective, have a very effective process uh, and a process that um, investors will find very interesting to invest in. Uh, if we look at uh, traditional pig farming or cow mm. farming, you're talking about about 18 months or yes. for a pig about nine months. So if you compare that to our eight days, that's a pretty significant achievement. Uh, and also even looking at our own process, uh, about a year ago, this process would have taken about three weeks. Uh, and we have really through uh, process optimization, both in what we call the proliferation phase, where we uh, produce the numbers of cells, as well as the differentiation phase, where we actually make the muscle and fat tissue. Uh, we have made big strides and now believe we have the fastest process in the field. So with the product that we currently produce, you can make any product that you can also make in the current sort of plant-based uh, product portfolio. So we're talking about uh, dumplings, sausages, hamburgers, those kind of products. Uh, but the case is that it is very high quality tissue. So if you look at the um, uh, fatty acid profiles, very uh, long fatty acid chains, exactly the right uh, and the same protein expression as you find in a typical meat. So from that perspective, it is very high quality uh, muscle and fat tissue. We use uh, pluripotent stem cells, epiblast cells. They divide very fast. And what we have now proven is that we can grow them in very high cell densities. And that basically means that uh, per liter of bioreactor capacity or per euro of investment, we create a lot of biomass. And then the second step is that we can, and that's with our uh, proprietary technology, our OptioX technology, we can actually make that into very high quality fat and muscle tissue within a couple of days. Uh, and that is done through, basically we have found the piece of DNA that is responsible for starting the differentiation of a pluripotent stem cell into fat and muscle tissue and with that um, uh, we are able to do it only within a couple of days. So that's the beauty of our process. Uh, we basically use uh, off-the-shelf uh, equipment, off-the-shelf bioreactors uh, and we don't need any scaffolding in our bioreactors. Uh, so really the product that we harvest is the product our product developers can make the products with. So yeah. the first step is what we call the proliferation yes. phase. There we have the stem cells. Mm -hmm. We can grow that now at densities of about 100 grams per liter, okay. which we think is the highest in the field. Again, that speaks to the capital efficiency of our process. Mm -hmm. And then we move the cells to a second bioreactor, yes. and that's where we do the differentiation into the fat and the muscle. So it means that you have exactly the same, on the muscle side, the same protein expression as you have with traditional meat. And on the fat side, that you really have mature long fatty acid chains and those are very important for the sensory experience of uh, real tasty meat but it is not a uh, solid meat type yes. uh, yeah. we are also working on solid meat but our first product to market will be a range of products uh, like i mentioned earlier that in the end what i think more and more investors as they become smarter see is that it's all about capital efficiency so and with us that means how much meat are you able to produce per liter of bioreactor capacity per day uh, and we believe that for that you need a perfusion system so basically what that means is that we fill up the bioreactor and every day we harvest about 50 percent of the cells and that then gives new room in the bioreactor for within a day the cells the, the bioreactor to completely fill up again uh, and by that you get the highest yield out of your bioreactor and that then drives obviously the cost of the product which we believe we need to be at cost parity to really uh, make a dent in the in the livestock farming industry. Uh, we already see at, uh, if you make a plant-based or a hybrid product, we already see that with 10% of our product, there's a big step up in the quality. If we do the internal tasting panels, uh, that's very clear to see. Typically what we now make is a 50-50 product, uh, which really has the advantage of, I believe in the early days, uh, this will be a supply 
limited market. Uh, and by doing a 50-50 hybrid product, we basically double our production capacity. So we will also go to market with a, with a hybrid product. So what we now have proven is that we can run our process at uh, an efficiency that if we are successfully able to scale it up, we have very attractive unit economics. So that's what we have proven. Also due to the efficiency of our process, we don't need that big of bioreactors. We need about 50 cubic meters, which is still very significant, but we don't need to go higher than that. So we think it's very, very feasible. Obviously there will be uh, engineering challenges as we, as we go along, uh, but we, we are very confident that this process will scale. So we have proven the process now on a 50 liter scale and are scaling it as we speak up to 500 liters. Uh, and what we aim to, uh, we aim to go to the market in Singapore first, uh, hoping to be on the market early next year. Uh, and after that, it's very clear that also with the approvals of uh, Upside Food and Good Meat, that the US is really the big market to go after. Uh, and we would love to be on the market there in 2025. Yeah, you see so many, so many developments. Um, for example, we have a collaboration with DSM, a uh, Dutch, Dutch food tech corporate. Uh, and with them, we have been able to reduce the price of one of the ingredients with 99%. Uh, and I think you see a lot of that uh, going on. Another company that I think is worth mentioning is Orf Genetics, who does something similar, uh, and also indeed on the bio process. For example, Arc Biotech uh, is, is a very interesting technology that we're, uh, that we're watching, and indeed that makes us very comfortable that the challenges that are, are ahead in scaling this to an industry scale are, uh, are very doable. So we've raised 60 million dollars to date um, and we already knew when we started this that uh, this was going to be a long game and that we had to had to fund through a, a down cycle um, and I think that's why we have always chosen to really focus on the fundamentals on scientific development, technical development, process development, intellectual property and I think also with the news coming out today that's really gonna pay off, pay off dividends so we are very comfortable that we'll also get through this um, uh, slightly more difficult funding environment. The, the advantages are many. I think one is obviously uh, that it's slaughter free. Uh, no animals have to be killed for this. The water use, the land use, climate change. I think all those things are very, very important key buying factors. Don't those also apply to plant-based beet though, which hasn't set the world on fire yet? Yes, and I think that's where you see that there's two things, uh, what we've learned in the past two years that consumers don't compromise on. It's product quality and it's price. Uh, and I think if you solve those two, and we believe we can, we know we can do it on the product side, our product is indistinguishable from traditional meat, if we can get the costs down on the same level to uh, early on what we are aiming for is uh, organic meat, uh, and then in the next six, seven years to really get to price parity with traditional meat, I think there's another reason why people would not buy it.